David, uh, thank, thank you for me. being with us. Obviously, uh, we're thinking about you and uh, everybody uh, in your classroom. David's and sister lost several friends. Yeah. His little sister. How, how, how are you and your sister doing? We're doing as good as we could be at this point. We just have to continue fighting to save every other child in America because these politicians won't. And these lobbyists aren't going to stop buying them. No, you know, um, we, um, it's so interesting that uh, people called you a crisis actor early on, and there was all this shock and outrage uh, in the media. How dare they? This word. And I just sat here thinking after what you've been through, after what your sister's been through, that's, that's the sort of thing you probably just brush off, right? At this point, it's just good advertising. I mean, it's bad press on their part, but we still get attention in the media. They're doing a great job of it. I've quadrupled my Twitter following. Yeah. None of it's true, so. Well, what, so what, what, what is the goal uh, for not only you and, um, and other people uh, that went through this hell in their schools, but, and, and, and how sustainable is it? Is this something that's going uh, to be, be with us now, but sort of just sort of fade away? No, this is going to continue. This will be a generation-long thing, and this is just getting started. Millennials are some, are some of the most politically active and uh, some of the most critical individuals I, I've ever met and people that I've grown up around as I am one. And as such, I think that's really what's going to sustain this process, realizing what's wrong with America and trying to fix it because the previous generation won't. Mike. David. You and your sister, both students at this school. The school is slated to reopen at some point this week, Tuesday or Wednesday, I guess. You can wash the blood from the floors. You can patch up the holes in the doors. But you can't wash away those memories. That's the issue. How do you deal with it? Do you know yet? I don't. I really don't. I don't personally, I don't want to go back to school until our legislators, at least in Florida, pass one bill, just one bill where either they raise the gun law, the age that you can buy any gun in the state to 21, or they have a universal background check system in Florida, or literally anything. Because at this point, why should I have to work if my elected officials won't work to save my life and everybody around me? And I want to point something out to you. All the glass that's being replaced in our school isn't being replaced with bulletproof glass. It's being replaced with the old glass that the shooter shot through. None of the locks are being replaced with locks that can be locked from the inside. And I know that's going to cost a lot of money, but if every school does it because of economies of scale, the price will go down. We just have to start that. Uh, David, condolences on your um, um, the, the, the losses that your family and friends have suffered here. I want to ask you, so right now you are up against an organization that spends a half a billion dollars a year with an agenda that says that we should have more guns in the hands of more people to be more safe. And so what's your message to that message and to that idea that the way to be more safe is to have more weapons in the hands of more people? Well, I think to those people I would say that it's good to have your Second Amendment rights. It's good to believe that you can protect yourself and protect those around you. But I want people to acknowledge the fact that we do have a major gun violence problem in this country, one that's not going away and hasn't gone away and won't go away until we have major reform enacted. And by reform, I don't mean away taking away people's guns. People are always going to have their guns and they're always going to have the Second Amendment. Yeah, because that's the argument that these kids are running around exactly. and people yeah. that support them want to confiscate guns, well, want to kick down yeah. doors and take guns. It's like this. Is that what you're talking about? In the same way that there's limitations on the First Amendment, right. where you can't yell fire in a crowded theater, you shouldn't be able to get an AR-15 or any weapon that could kill a number of people if you're a mentally unstable individual, if you're a person with a criminal background or somebody with a history of domestic violence. I don't get what's so hard for these legislators to understand. This is sensible gun control that both sides can support, but they sadly can't because they're bought by the NRA. Jim Van de um, it's, Your activism has been very admirable. How much are you hearing from people outside of Florida, from other kids who want to get involved? And when you talk about it becoming a generational thing, how do you organize something like that? Is that underway? Are you in well, contact with people who can put that together? What it has to be is a grassroots movement. That's what, we're, that's what we've created here. We have had some support from celebrities, but mainly it's a grassroots movement by getting funding from everybody around here. Last night I was in Livingston, New Jersey at a campaign rally because essentially that's what this has become, sadly. It didn't have to be. But I was there giving a speech explaining my situation, our agenda, and everything like that. And I was meeting amazing individuals and shaking hands with them. And it was every single person that I met with there, I knew that's how change was coming. Because those people showed up. And because those people showed up, they stood up and made their voice heard. And we're going to have to outlive the NRA. And we will. Because they certainly aren't going to stop, but neither are we. David, um, are, 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 are you, uh, your family, the community, 
Uh, are you starting to hear uh, a, a rising concern about how the Broward uh, sheriffs uh, See, operated staying outside while the shooting was going on? See, I'm glad you bring that up. And it, it definitely is a raising concern, that the fact that they didn't go in. But that also brings up two things. One, how can we expect our teachers to step in and take action if trained security guards that are part of the sheriff's <laughs> department wouldn't take action? And two, why are these elected officials trying to blame this on the bureaucracy? They're in charge of them. This is their fault. They should have been regulating them. I'm not going to allow them to pressure these people because at the end of the day, it's their fault. These elected officials are the boss of these sheriff personnel. Right. And just like the president is the boss of the FBI, right. Governor Rick Scott is essentially the boss of Scott Israel, the sheriff. And as such, he should be held accountable. He right. can't just blame this on the bureaucracy and expect to get reelected. And I, 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 I think uh, the, that that investigation is starting, but it is it is shocking that you hear time and again in these types of tragedies, teachers, and in this case a football coach, stepping in front of bullets, saving lives, and mind you, giving their lives while people that are paid by taxpayers in Broward County were staying outside, hiding behind their cars. Exactly, and I, I want to point something out. Quote, um, that, that's, that football coach, um, Coach Fias, he was a security guard and he was protecting those students. He's one of the people that stepped in, unlike those cowardly um, Broward County Sheriff's officials, honestly. Yeah. I, I fully support law enforcement and we always should. Without them, I wouldn't be able to speak here today. None of us would. We wouldn't be able to have a functioning democracy where everybody can practice their First Amendment right to freedom of, of speech. Sadly, these are a few individuals that did not conduct their job correctly, yeah. but I don't think it's right that Governor Rick Scott's trying to blame this on the bureaucracy in an effort to get reelected. By the way, so your AP history mm -hmm. uh, teacher, Jeff Foster. AP Gov, yeah. AP Gov watches the show. Yes, he does. All right. All right. We hey, Jeff, hi, thank Jeff. you for watching thank the show. You. All right. David Hogg, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And good, good luck. Thank you for having See me. All right. Soon. All right. Ahead in our 7 o'clock hour, we're going to speak with Congressman Brian Mast of Florida. He's Republican, an Army veteran, now supporting a ban on those powerful types of guns we've been talking about. Up next this hour, President Trump calls the Democrat memo a, quote, total political and legal bust. Mm. NBC's Carol Lee and the New York Times' Michael Schmidt join us with their latest reporting. Morning Joe is back in a moment. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.